The scientific consensus is clear. The world has a huge carbon problem. Humans have released more than 2 trillion metric tons of greenhouse gases into the Earth's atmosphere since the start of the first industrial revolution. And the vast majority of these emissions have occurred since the mid-1950s. This is more carbon than nature can reabsorb. And every year, humanity pumps out more than 50 billion additional tons of greenhouse gases. This blanket of carbon in our atmosphere is heating the planet and changing our climate. And this isn't a problem that lasts just a few years or even a decade. Once excess carbon enters the atmosphere, it can take thousands of years to dissipate. Already, the planet's temperature has risen by one degree Celsius. And if we don't curb emissions and temperatures continue to climb, science tells us that the results will be catastrophic. In fact, scientists agree that if we don't do anything, temperatures could rise somewhere between one and a half and four and a half degrees Celsius. So what can we do? Well, it starts by understanding and getting real about carbon math. Scientists account for carbon emissions by classifying them into three categories or scopes. Scope one emissions are the direct emissions that your activities create, like the exhaust from the car you drive, or for a business, the trucks it drives to transport its products from one place to another, or the diesel generators it might run. Scope two emissions are indirect emissions that come from the production of the electricity or heat you use, like the traditional energy sources that light up your home or power the buildings owned by a business. Scope three emissions are the indirect emissions that come from all the other activities in which you're engaged, including the emissions associated with producing the food you eat or manufacturing the products that you buy. For a business, these emission sources can be extensive and must be accounted for across its entire supply chain from the materials in its buildings, the business travel of its employees, to the full life cycle of its products, including the electricity that customers may consume when using something like a phone, laptop, or gaming console. Given this broad range, a company's scope three emissions are often far larger than its scope one and two emissions put together. And this accounting is important because if we're going to avoid the worst aspects of a rapidly changing climate, then the world must reduce its carbon emissions and reach net zero across all scopes. Now, net zero doesn't mean that there will no longer be any carbon emissions at all, but it does mean that the world will need to remove as much carbon as it emits. This will require two things. First, we'll need to reduce carbon emissions very substantially over the next few decades. And second, we'll need to remove carbon from the atmosphere starting with nature-based removal approaches, but ultimately through including new carbon removal technologies, like direct air capture approaches that literally remove carbon from the air. And while the world will need to reach net zero, those of us who can afford to move faster and go further should do so. That's why Microsoft is committing to become carbon negative by 2030, meaning that we'll reduce our emissions by half and remove from the atmosphere more carbon than we emit including all of our scope one, two, and three emissions. It's why we're also committing to remove, by 2050, all of the carbon Microsoft has emitted, either directly or by electrical consumption, since it was founded in 1975. Simply put, the stakes are too high for us to not make bold changes now. The world is counting on all of us to act.